Okay, let's talk about using expanders. Hey everybody, so today's video is actually a request from my Patreon. So thank you so much to the Patreon patron that requested this topic. And if you want to request a topic too, you can check out my Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Cato Noise. So with that said, let's get started. So first of all, let's just define what an expander is. So an expander in some ways, depending on how you think about it, is kind of like the opposite of a compressor. So instead of reducing the dynamic range the way a compressor does, an expander actually increases the dynamic range. And again, remember the dynamic range has to do with loudness. So it's that range from how quiet something is to how loud that thing gets. So once we understand that, it's easy to understand how you can use an expander to make your track more varied in volume, right? And it's good to know, right, an expander, kind of similar to how, you know, a compressor or a gate works, it's using algorithms to run things. It's a computer. It's not listening with a musical ear the way we do. So depending on how you use it, you can sometimes cause like unnatural and perhaps unwanted like pumping effects with it. Very similar to how, um, you know, if you use a compressor incorrectly, you can get some unwanted sounds. So just keep that in mind as you use it. You always want to use your ear. You're the one with the musical ear, not the computer. But with that said, it can also be used to make something sound more organic, right? So you think about super processed recordings versus recordings that aren't as processed. Often the recordings that aren't as processed have more variation in volume. They have a larger dynamic range. So you could use an expander to help you um, get a little closer to that kind of a feel. So how can we use expanders? Um, honestly, I don't use expanders a whole bunch. I uh, don't use gates a whole bunch either. And expanders and gates are very similar. We'll talk about about that in a minute. But one way you can use an expander is, for example, on drums or really any musical instrument, but drums are kind of the easy ones to conceptualize, at least in my head. Um, so sometimes with drums, you have unwanted reverb that gets into the drum recording or um, you have unwanted bleed, right? A lot of times we use a bunch of different microphones on a drum kit and maybe you have one mic that's trying to capture the snare, but you get a little bit of unwanted sound from the toms coming into the snare, for example. Um, I don't know if that's the best example, but hopefully that makes sense. So a lot of times we have unwanted bleed or unwanted reverb, and we can use an expander to reduce that unwanted bleed or that unwanted reverb. So if you want to kind of start to have the effect of getting rid of reverb in a recording, you could try an expander. So this might also help with things that were recorded in a less than ideal environment, right? You're still going to have that reverb while the actual signal that you want is going, but you can help reduce that reverb sound between things, if that makes sense. And again, that's just because that expander can help you increase that dynamic range. So it can help you reduce that difference between the dry and the wet signal. Um, it can help you reduce that wet signal that's between the dry stuff, right? It can help you also reduce that quieter bleed, right? Because the bleed's probably gonna be quieter than the wanted signal, I would hope. Another way you can use an expander is with side chaining. So just like how we use side chaining with compression a lot, you've probably heard the term side chain compression, we can also do side chaining with expanders. So with side chain compression, a lot of times the goal is you have a track A and track B, and track A will control the signal on track B, and usually we put the compression on track B so that it reduces the signal in track B when track A is active. So a super common example of that that you've might have already heard about, right, is when the kick drum is going, so that would be track A is the kick drum, it controls the side chain compression on track B, which might be the bass, and it reduces the level of the bass while the kick drum is is kicking in, while it's in play, right? And so that helps the kick drum pop through a little bit more. Um, often we will do side chain compression with the kick drum and a whole bunch of other things in our track too to kind of help everything kind of pump with the beat, right? So similarly, but kind of the opposite effect, we can do side chaining with an expander. So with side chain compression, right, we have track A and track B and they're doing opposite things. When A is loud, B is quiet in our example, right? However, if we do side chaining with an expander, we have track A and B behaving more in sync with each other. So if track A is louder, track B is going to be louder, potentially, depending on how we set it. And when track A is quieter, track B might get quieter as well. So they're moving in parallel with each other instead of in opposing directions, 
I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments below if that doesn't make sense. So yeah, this can really help you blend two sounds together and really make them behave as if they're one cohesive sound. And it can help you save a lot of time in terms of things like volume automation. Um, I hope that makes sense. So yeah, that's what I've learned about expanders over the years. I also have this open so you can see an example of one. This is the stock one that comes with Pro Tools. And you'll notice down here, just like with the compressor limiter, there are two options here, right? Expander gate. And that's because expanders and gates are very similar to each other, just like compressors and limiters, right? With compressors and limiters, a limiter is just a compressor with a really extreme ratio. And similarly, an expander and a gate the big difference is the ratio. So the way I've been taught, at least, is that a gate is just an expander that tends to use a high ratio to bring things downward. So it's a downward expander is another term that you could use. So with that said, I just want to do a really quick listening example with this plugin for us. So again, this is the stock plugin in Pro Tools. So if you have Pro Tools, you have this plugin. And I just pulled up a sample from Splice really quickly. It has like a good amount of noise between the hits. Um, you'll hear what I'm talking about here. And this is just like um, one of my scrap sessions. That I, had, I think I started this with a student at some point. But um, so I've highlighted this drum loop. I'm going to play it for you. And you'll notice that my ratio is at one to one. So right now it's not uh, expanding or gating, right? So gating. We don't really say gating. Maybe maybe some people do. I don't know. Um, I'm going to hit play so you can hear it and listen for the noise between the drum hits. So I thought this would be a good one, right? Because it has a good amount of noise between the drum hits. I'm going to bring up this ratio so you can hear as it starts to reduce those hits. So you hear how that cutoff became stricter and stricter as I cranked up that ratio. And that's just the computer deciding, hey, this is the quiet stuff. This is how much I should reduce that quiet stuff. So yeah, that's about all I have time for in this video today. Maybe we could do another video on using expanders in more detail. Not all expanders look like this. There's a whole range of plugins out in the market. So maybe we could dig into some of the other um, features and ways that expanders are presented. So let me know if you might be interested in that in the comments below. And other than that, I hope this helps someone out there. There. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I would appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have that Patreon. Again, this was a Patreon request video. It's patreon.com slash noise. And my patrons get access to additional content. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're doing an audio engineering and music production book club on there. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Um, let's see. I got a bunny tattoo. She's upside down, but um, I named her Millie. I think she might go well with like a snowboard or like a whole bunch of color all around, like out of the lines and in the lines. And I don't know. What do you think?